why would we choose closure over PHP? Uh, okay, so why would we choose closure over PHP? Uh, so PHP has got the most ridiculous half-baked designed by one group of people over a 10-year period of time, non-consistent syntax of any language I've ever used. And closure only has like parentheses and that's it. Well, sure, but I mean, you know, you have this weird blend of camel case and uh, dashes in your names. In PHP. Uh, well, in closure. <laughs> and then PHP, you have either camel case or underscores. I mean, it's, uh, so this, this sounds like a, I mean, what do you mean by inconsistency? Uh, you know, I don't, so I guess I don't have a, so the, the mix of keywords and functions, like some, some functions in PHP are magical and they're actually keywords and some of them are actually functions. And then there's, depending on which version of PHP you're using, you've either, the, you parse XML with the standard library with one that's like parse XML and then with the next version of PHP, it's XML parse. And then you have to say like, if I'm using this version of PHP, then Clojure does not have this problem because you can just write a macro and, uh, and, and, you're, and you're done, right? But, 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 so you don't have to compile it. You don't have to compile, compile Clojure either because you can run Clojure scripts. Oh, shoot, okay, all right. So uh, what about ease of use getting running? So I will, I will concede that it's probably easier to get started with PHP, but how often do you get started with something? Like once, right? Like, whereas you have to live with PHP for the rest of your life. <laughs> Are you saying there's a reason it runs 80% of the web? So I, so I think PHP is a great way to uh, is a great lightweight way to get started. But if you want to build serious software and if you want to build more than just a web app, then uh, I think you're going to need more than PHP. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, the fact that Facebook had to like write an entire new compiler infrastructure for it and essentially just rebuild the language around what they needed it indicates that it's a bad language to start with and they're just stuck with it. Why like closure and not just straight up Java? Uh, okay, so why closure rather than straight up Java? So uh, I, I, I really like the, um, oh, what's the word? Homo, Ikeonogonogono, what's the word? I don't know, it's really long. Uh, something, something, data as program as data, data as program, something like that. Something lispish, yes. So here's a really good example of why Clojure is awesome compared to Java. Um, they just released the, this core async stuff, right, mm -hmm. which makes Clojure kind of like Go. It has these um, kind of CSP uh, channels and really nice ways of doing um, asynchronous stuff. They didn't have to do any language feature changes at all for this huge kind of change, like it's almost a new paradigm, a new way of using uh, of writing software. They didn't have to in introduce any language features at all because the language itself is so flexible. I don't, I don't think, well, I know you wouldn't be able to do that with Java. Even um, something like C Sharp or even something like JavaScript doesn't have that flexibility. That's why I like Clojure. Yeah, you, it's one of the uh, reasons I like Clojure. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at Java and you have to um, be bound to a very clunky API. Sure. And I think that would be the same in C Sharp as well. I don't know. This. So, so C Sharp, they did a really good job. You've got like a bit of a uh, oh, yeah. I mean, right? it's uh, it's it's slightly less verbose in cases, but overall, I would say syntactically, it's remarkably similar. Um, True, but like they did the like, so they did the 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 um, the lambda thing, like all of the link stuff. Mm -hmm. I think was a really good example of them taking a little bit, uh, like changing the language or adding stuff to the language just enough to let them do a bunch of stuff um, outside of the language. So they added just that, that kind of lightweight Lambda syntax. And, and they didn't add stuff specifically around processing XML or processing SQL, but they added enough stuff to the language to allow you to do all of that, um, all of that extra cool stuff without changing the language. So I think they did a better job than, than, than the Java guys did in, in that respect. Well, now that they're trying to catch up to some extent. Yeah. But I, I find it interesting for the link uh, capabilities, I find most people don't take advantage of it. Yep. But it's the one argument they always use for taking C Sharp over anything else, which I, sure. I find uh, interesting. Okay, so here's my, here's my question for you. If you, um, if you, uh, um, 
where's the line between like really using the power of something like Link and overusing it? So this is a really, like if I was arguing against Clojure, this would be the thing that I would use, or Scala, right? Is it's really easy to write idiomatically terse Link uh, or, 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 Scala, or Scala or Clojure that um, for someone who uses it a lot, they can, they can really understand it and it's very expressive. Uh, but for someone who's new to the team, maybe, or new to the language, it's totally impenetrably dense. Like, wh where do you think that line lies? Or how do you decide where that line is? That, that one's an interesting one, because I struggle with that a lot, yeah. using a lot of the more obscure language features myself. Um, uh -huh. I find when I personally struggle to keep it straight in my head, that is the, uh, it's kind of a hard line that I have crossed at that point. Okay. Because uh, most people can be trained to understand something, but when you can't understand your own code, that's when, <laughs> that's when it's a serious problem. Right, right yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but you, if you, uh, you're, so you're someone who I know is kind of like a language enthusiast and you kind of like learning all these tech features. So if, you, if you're having a hard time understanding it, then I'd say you've already passed that line. What about... Um, so if I wanted to play kind of devil's advocate, I'd say, oh, we should just, we should just use, we shouldn't use um, four comprehensions. We should always use four loops because everyone understands a for loop. Uh, so that might be the first thing people learn when they're learning something like iteration or looping. Mm -hmm. um, just because it's the first thing that they learn doesn't necessarily mean it should be the only thing they ever learn. Yep. Uh, it requires having the patience to be able to teach people when they don't know and allowing enough flexibility for them to still be able to use the older or different way of doing things uh, until they become comfortable and then be willing to take the time to train them up into that better position where they do understand the other ways of doing things. Sure. Um, and it's, it's, it's not enough to simply say don't use it because people don't understand it. It's, a, it's really just a matter of exposure and training. Yeah. I guess so. I guess, and, and it's it's tricky, especially if you're um, if the team is rotating, or if you want to have the same team across. Like, you know, I want to take the, the devs from team A and then be able to move a couple of devs over to team B. Mm -hmm. Then you start kind of worrying about team A is using the language this way, and team B is using the language the other way. Maybe they're maybe maybe they're going to diverge too much, and we need a corporate standard around for loops. That one's really interesting because uh, what you're going to find is there is a huge amount of divergence just in terms of the reasoning around the business domain. Uh -huh. And that uh, has nothing to do with the technology. And I find that that huh. is usually the larger problem and where the bottleneck is in terms of uh, being able to pick up concepts quickly and apply them and then carry them forward to another team. Uh, the technology is not the bottleneck in that case. Okay. And so you're saying we're kind of screwed anyway, so don't bother with trying to... It's, it's not so much screwed. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's... Um, it, it's it's recognizing that it's more than just the language. Sure. Now, yeah, uh, if you find something like a very common pattern across teams, where uh, you know, some teams are doing some particularly different things, and that and there are, are people who are actually legitimately struggling to pick it up, then that is definitely an indicator. But it's I wouldn't say that it's ever a hard black and white answer. You really got to look at it and sure. say, okay, is this even worth changing? Because sometimes changing it can make it worse. Yeah, I guess the other thing is if you have like this corporate standard, then it means evolving that standard as you evolve your understanding of like the best way to use a language, for example, is really hard. Like, that's my current client. It definitely is that, that our challenge, even on our team, we're, we're, we're doing Scala and we've, um, the way that we use the language has really evolved as we've kind of got more familiar with it and stuff that we thought was a really bad idea, it turned out it was a good idea, stuff that we thought was a good idea, it turns out it was a bad idea. And if we had to go to an architectural committee somewhere and present to them, then it would be a harder time for us to evolve and flex as we as we figured the language. Which is kind of ironic given that Scala itself doesn't really have a standard. Uh... Scala, Scala is... Uh... Did you ever do any C++ development? I did. It feels like you can write C++ as C, or you can write C++ as this weird kind of conglomeration of OO, but it's not quite OO. Yep. So I think it's very, very similar to that. And it's got this, uh, like, this, the, the running joke with C++ is you have to choose, like, standardize on the subset of the language because you can't use all of the features. I think Scala is exactly the same. You have to choose, like, you know, we are going to use these bits of the language, but we're not going to use the other ones because we try and, try and use all of it, then no one's going to learn. Then exactly. no one's going to be able to, to follow each other's code, I think. Yeah, and then the tough part, of course, if you are beholden to a standard, it's uh, it assumes a... Um, 
that there is one way that things are guaranteed to work, never mind that it doesn't allow for that room to grow into a better yeah. place. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, it's almost symptomatic of uh, management not trusting the developers to do their job, at least on the surface it feels that way. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I don't know how to challenge that. If you had to challenge that in your career? Um, I haven't had to do that with like standardizing on languages. I've definitely had to, I think almost every client I've had to have some discussion at some point around letting team evolutionary architecture, like letting teams discover the, the 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 design rather than trying to figure out all the design up front. And I think that's really hard because people are worried about making that classic kind of waterfall thing of like if you make a mistake at the beginning, it's cheaper to fix than to make it later on. Uh, and so we're all kind of especially people who've been in industry for a long time, they kind of feel like we need to make sure we think about it, all of the things up front, because otherwise we'll screw it up. Um, we are going to screw it up. I guarantee we'll make the wrong decision, so let's make less decisions up front well, when we know the least. Yeah, with all the decisions up front, you still end up screwing it up anyway. Yeah, exactly, so, uh, exactly. Why not give in to what, what's inevitable? <laughs> yeah, my favorite, my favorite consulting uh, annoying thing to say to people at the moment is you never know uh, less than you know right now. 